And as mentioned, I promised you last week that we will be talking about the report to all from the CRL Commission, and that is the Commission for the Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Cultural, Religious, and Linguistic Communities. Now, I'm not sitting alone in studio with me. I am with Mrs. Rooks Moodley. Now, a very good morning to you, um, Rooks, and thank you so much for taking time out to come again and educate us and, you know, just give us the lowdown on what the progress has been from the last time you were here. Well, good morning and and thank you so much for having me in studio. Okay, basically the CRL is the Commission for Culture, Religion and Linguistics. Mm -hmm. And in October 2016, a process was started where they released a report uh, entitled Commercialization of Religion and Abuse of People's Belief Systems. So it then gave the citizens an opportunity to engage Mm -hmm. around the report and consultations took place. So the Eastern Cape NGO Coalition, an umbrella body Mm -hmm. representing non-profit organizations, community-based and faith-based organizations, Mm -hmm. started consultations in the Eastern Cape amongst faith-based organizations. And so we conducted workshops sharing the report, the proposed organogram, Mm -hmm. the content of the report, particularly what is interesting at the same time when the CRL report was being released, Mm -hmm. we also had consultations about the bill, which was known as the hate speech and hate crime. So essentially what happened from October 2016, there's been consultations and dialogues around two main constitutional clauses Mm -hmm. which impacts on freedom of religion Mm -hmm. and freedom of speech speech, so essentially the commission's report focuses a lot on regulation of religion with various components including uh, looking at um, regulation of places of worship Mm -hmm. issuing of licenses um, including um, the kind of doctrines that will be um, taught mm. by w- within, particularly within the, the church setting. Mm. And uh, this report, after they had interviewed about 85 people, which is not a very huge sample, however, then presented them with findings that then came to the conclusion in terms of regulation of religion. Mm. And so this process has been going on. And so the Eastern Cape NGO Coalition would like to just provide an update in terms of what's happening is that the coming week on Tuesday 17th and Wednesday 18th of October from 9.30 to 1 o'clock um, at the Cape, in Cape Town at Parliament, there will be public hearings. I think the thing that is very startling is that in the above-mentioned commercialization of religion report, the CRL included a page confirming that their recommendations have the support of over 30 million Christians from all denominations and faith groups. Wait, are these are these Christians that are saying they are for the bill that Correct. wants to be passed? Correct. And they're okay with the regulation of the doctrines that they're supposed to teach and how they conduct their church services? Yeah, that is correct. However, in the Eastern Cape, through all the consultations Mm -hmm. we've had, there was a major outcry and from many of the groupings that have been part of the consultation process Mm. to say that we cannot accept the findings of the CRL Commission, Mm -hmm. not uh, simply because there are existing laws in our country. And for a long time, we enjoyed the benefit of freedom of religion. And so we're concerned that the regulation of religion will definitely impact on people's freedom of worship. And so uh, what we are doing is we're calling on citizens to please make sure that they have sent their presentations to the Department of COCTA, which is Corporative Governance and Traditional Affairs. And the name of the person is Shireen Kasim. And her contact number is 083-709-8533. Her email address is s. Kasim, C-A-S-S-R-E-M, at parliament.gov.za. 
Now, people should have sent in presentations, mm. but we would encourage people to also next week have their position papers ready once we hear what the outcomes are, because we are concerned mm -hmm. that if uh, in the annual report, the CRL is saying that there has been support from over 30 million Christians, it almost seems that it's going in a certain direction at this point in time. But let's be honest a little bit and just look at it. Do you think the report is entirely a true representative of or representation of really what Christians did say? Or could it be a case of maybe they're trying to get us to think that they really have the support? Because looking at what I have here, which is the Eastern Cape, you've got a, a, a number of signatures of pastors and, you know, um, faith leaders saying, actually, we cannot have that Um could that be the case? Do we really, as Christians, want to have, you know, our faith and our religion regulated to such an extent that we cannot preach the word of God as pure and diluted as can be? Well, hence, that's, I suppose, what also concerns me, because in general, within the Eastern Cape in particular, mm. and of course, hearing from other network groups mm. as well, uh, people have not supported the findings of the CRL Commission. However, we need to participate in sending press presentations True. because it is the evidence and the facts that we will be able mm. to take to the constitutional court later on to say can you consider a review because there has been public participation mm -hmm. but is this is the decision that has now been taken in terms of the CRL commission so hence the Eastern Cape NGO coalition is pleading mm -hmm. with the faith-based organizations and this does not only affect the Christians it yeah. affects Muslims it affects Hindus it affects all all religions across board that we need to stand up and make sure that our, our our voice is heard and our voice is counted and that we make sure that we send our presentations to COCTA and that we also uh, uh, make sure that we're up to date in terms of hearing what the outcomes are so that mm. we can participate effectively. So this is really a call to all faith-based organizations mm. um, not to stand on the periphery but to become the center of a collective voice mm. and not wait till a policy decision is make, made and then it might be too late. Because if we do keep silent, that means somewhere or another we swaying to the side of saying go ahead and um, implement that policy. Absolutely. And but in, in terms of public participation, mm -hmm. it is important that we not only just speak but we also write mm -hmm. so that our presentations and then also if we can contact COCTA to find out from all the presentations that have been sent, mm -hmm. who is being given an opportunity so that people could be in Cape Town in Parliament making their voice heard before this moves to the next stage. So then which then brings me to a question, what happens now um, we go to Parliament or the matter goes to Parliament and based on what she's saying that many Christians are for the bill or the law that wants to be passed and then um, it's agreed that go ahead implement the policy what then can we do from there? Is there maybe an appeal process that can happen or do we just wait for next week, Tuesday, and it says let's implement that and that's over and done with? Hence, we're encouraging people to start making sure that they've sent their presentations mm. in prior to next week okay. because... If we send in presentations, it means that we have legal recourse to be able to go to the constitutional okay. court where policy is set and ask them for a review or to ask them to present the facts as to how was this decision mm. passed. And so... Hence, we're encouraging public participation. That is the only route that we have mm. at this point in time. So we're asking people to come out and make their voices heard and make sure their presentations have been sent to COCTA before Tuesday so that we can have some form of recourse. Okay, let's go to a quick ad break. And then after the ad break, we will be talking to a colleague of yours, um, Michael Swain. Um, he will be on the line with us and then we'll continue with the discussion. Yes, I just want to say that Michael Swain from Freedom of Religion South Africa, they also have legal expertise. Okay. And so he would be able to touch more around uh, what kind of recourse can be taken and all of that. 
Good morning and good morning to your listeners. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us this morning. Now, we've been talking to Rooks this morning and she was just giving us the lowdown of what happened from the time the, the, the bill was proposed to where we stand today to saying that next week, Tuesday, um, it's going to Parliament for discussion and presentations. So from your side as the Freedom of Religion South Africa, what is it that we need to know as South Africans? Well, number one, this is very much being hotly debated. Uh, the CRL's proposal is to license and thereby control uh, religion, effectively by giving licenses to all religious practitioners and places of worship. And that they are a state institution, uh, this effectively means that the states, if they get their way, will control religion in South Africa. That's all religion, not just Christian religion. And that, of course, is deeply concerning. Um, I think very significantly and concerningly as well is that um, the CRL are making claims, for example, they were in Parliament last week, claiming that some 40 million people actually support these recommendations. And they cite in their report um, the African Council of Churches, the Evangelical Alliance of South Africa, the IFCC, and some others. Um, whereas we know for a fact that that is actually a, a gross misrepresentation uh, at best and at worst, deliberately misleading and, and dishonest, um, which is, of course, doubly concerning since the CRL Commission is a chapter nine institution and should be, you know, obviously above reproach in terms of its integrity. Um, but all that to say is that, yes, next week on Tuesday and Wednesday, there will be submissions made to the uh, COGTA Parliamentary Portfolio Committee. Um, last time the CRL were there, they claimed that this uh, move of theirs had overwhelming support. I think they're going to be in for a big surprise on Tuesday and Wednesday because we know that well over 200 submissions have been made in opposition to what they're intending. So this will be the first opportunity, really, that the faith community has had to be heard on this matter. So then what happens on Tuesday, as I asked um, Rooks earlier on, when they decide to implement or go for the, the implementation of the, of, of, of the bill? What, then, what legal recourse do we then have as the face, faith-based community to say, no, we still are against this? Because we do know that um, in South Africa, the law does allow us to actually um, appeal or ask for a review on certain um, yeah. bills that are to be passed. What then do we do after whatever is decided on Tuesday? Well, at the moment, the, the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee are taking submissions on the, to really evaluate the level of support or opposition there is to what the CRL is proposing. So it has not yet gone forward to legislation. Okay. Um, we are hoping, therefore, at this stage that the level of opposition and the reasons behind the opposition uh, will be sufficiently compelling for the Portfolio Committee to do what it can do, which is to basically say, look, this is not a great idea. Um, it needs what we're proposing, of course, is that we need to be self-regulating. Um, we need, yes, to tighten up certain things and to you know, look at some of the very real issues that the CRL report has raised, but let the religious community, particularly the church, have the opportunity to self-regulate, to address these things as we see fit, rather than as the state would decide for us. What's the worst thing that could happen if this does become law? Well, the worst thing that could happen is, is that they will get their way. Every religious practitioner would be um, licensed. Uh, they would evaluate whether or not uh, religious doctrine is acceptable or not. Um, and essentially, you would have a, a very serious erosion of our rights to freedom of religion. Mm. Uh, the state would ultimately be able to control, even though it may be benign, uh, at first it could turn cancerous, but ultimately the state would be able to control potentially what it considered to be acceptable religious practice or not. Um, and that is definitely not at all where we should go. And what our constitution, uh, with the rights that we have under Section 15 to freedom of religion, uh, we should be and we will certainly fight uh, to be in, to ensure that we are protected in this in that space. So if it does go through, if legislation does get passed, you can be absolutely sure that there will be lawsuits right the way through to the Constitutional Court if necessary. Mm. The problem being, though, is that, of course, during that time, the laws will be operational. They will be in effect. Um, so we are doing whatever we can to try and head it off uh, at an earlier stage. 
Rooks is still in studio with me. I'm not sure, um, Rooks, if there's anything you would like to ask or add on to what Michael is saying. No, I would just like to endorse what Michael is saying, that we do need to encourage citizens to be able to participate and make their voices heard so that we can have legal recourse, like Michael has said. And it's mm -hmm. important that people stand up for their convictions, you know, because this is affecting a very important constitutional mm -hmm. freedom, which is freedom of religion. Yeah, I think very importantly, um, citizens, and particularly those who have uh, faith, need to be informed of these things because this will affect every one of us. So I would thoroughly recommend that um, you look at the Freedom of Religion uh, SA Facebook page. We update that pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. And we also have a website, uh, www.4sa.org.za, where we also uh, post notifications and what have you. Um, so certainly stay informed. This is just one of actually many uh, Freedom of Religion issues that we're dealing with at the moment. Uh, but I think it is certainly one of the most significant.